Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. This is Simon with Ava Trade. Welcome to our weekly webinar. And it's called mapping out your week ahead trading prospects. So just in simple words, what we're trying to do here is be practical and create a plan for the day. As traders like to use the phrase, you plan your trade and then you trade your plan. And uh, that just removes unnecessary issues. Uh, doesn't guarantee success, of course, but it makes things more organized and less spontaneous. A few things about myself. My name is Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with Ava Trade. And I started my trading career uh, in June of 2000. It's almost 24 years. It's my passion. I love it. I live it. And uh, without loving trading, it's uh, really hard to, uh, to be in this business. Uh, I'm sure you understand that and you feel it as well. Uh, I started as prop trader back in 2000. I did it for about 11 years on Wall Street and I moved uh, away from uh, day trading or intense day trading. And I still continue trading and also men, men, mentor and educate other traders since then. And of course, today I'm very happy that I have an opportunity to assist our customers at Abba Trade. The agenda of the webinar, we talk a little bit about the big picture we discussed briefly last week. Uh, we uh, see what's important happening fundamentally in the week ahead. Uh, we bring up the economic calendar and then we look at the technical part of trading. Uh, we go through indices, stocks, commodities and forex. Risk warning, you can find full statement at avatrade.com. And of course, what we do here is purely educational. We do not suggest any trades. Now, these are the channels of Avatrade that I highly recommend for you to follow. You have uh, Telegram, you have Twitter, or now it's X, and my favorite, and I'm not tired of uh, keep on repeating it, YouTube channel. We have uh, information there updated. We have webinars uh, being uploaded recorded and uploaded including this one so feel free to subscribe if you like it click on likes subscribe click on the bell you'll be notified on new things coming of course share and very very important if you are watching this on youtube uh, i would like to hear more feedback your opinion your reaction your suggestions uh, type it in i'll be happy to uh, to see your comments and it helps me improving things Okay, so uh, we're starting, uh, and uh, I just want to start with this picture. Uh, as I said a few times, uh, this guy right here, the chair of uh, Federal Reserve, his name is uh, Jerome Powell, and I, I think he's, he's running uh, the show pretty much for, for quite a few years now, as uh, he had uh, hit someone or many people before him in that position. They have a lot of power and they have to be super careful. Uh, this is the picture I took from Barron's uh, article on uh, marketwatch.com. Uh, you can read it. It's not a long article and it says right here in the title, how the Federal Reserve could throw stocks for a loop. And uh, why, why am I bringing this picture? We have a very serious week ahead of us. So I hope you're getting some rest this week and you're excited about the upcoming week. It's going to be a lot of things. And we have four major interest rate decisions. Uh, we're going to take a look uh, in details when we get to the economic calendar. But I'm just going to give you a little spoiler here. It's Australian uh, Bank of Australia. Uh, deciding on the rates uh, then we have uh, bank of japan then we have uh, feds in the us and then we have uh uk or bank of england so very eventful week <coughs> forgive me for my coughing and uh, now what happened last week we also will see it more uh, clearly when we look at the charts uh, but we the last two days especially friday we, we had some uh, sell-off on the equity markets and it looks like the tech stocks are kind of selling here after making all-time highs and running the markets and indices up and uh, it looks like they really worried a little bit about the feds 
and they want to hear and know what's next uh, as we know uh, until uh, recently uh, there was a big hope uh, that they will start cutting rates in march now it's been moved uh, or priced in uh, somewhere in june and so on so it's very very important uh, this decision this report and this uh uh speech i guess i guess or or or, or uh, body language of the feds in this case uh definitely the market wants to hear something positive and if if we hear something that it's not bringing those cuts anytime soon it might be very disappointing for the markets and it's going to be an exciting week an exciting wednesday when that decision comes that's the reason i brought you this uh picture here you can read an article it came out on the 15th and a big responsibility for mr powell and his team uh another thing this is the 10-year yields uh sometimes i show it as uh it is uh very sensitive here and uh lately gold and dollars been reacting to it so as you could see here if you remember we mentioned a few weeks back we were trading in the channel for a while between 4.2 percent and 4.3 then we broke through uh two weeks ago we just sold uh or i mean the sold we went down sorry i came right back uh we went almost to four percent and then this past week we had to move up again as we're getting closer to the fed's decision and this instrument is sensitive and gold is sensitive to this and dollar as well so when we when we look at the charts uh based on this in the past week we should see a potential move in gold to the downside and potential move in dollar to the upside so just remember that when we get to the charts uh economic calendar uh, a few words especially for new people just to represent it and uh, i think it's important and whether you use that directly or indirectly but i think every trader that res respect himself or herself should know about these things and especially uh, the following things that I brought up, it's all high impact events. There's much more, but what I do here, I just take the high impact events, as you could see here uh, in red, you can filter through them. You can find economic calendar on our website or the mobile uh, app of Avatrade. And of course, there's many of the uh third party providers that that provide this information it's all public information it comes from the same source so it's not a secret so um here we go monday we have china news we have retail sales and industrial production tuesday we have uh, bank of japan interest rate decision and monetary policy statement definitely be watching the yen and the nikkei the local index and um, just to remind us and especially mention to new people bank of japan is the only major bank that uh, still keeps negative interest right here right and uh, guess what wow this is the first time i see so they look uh, the consensus is that they will move it to zero percent wow I just see it right now. So again, uh, I know the Bank of Japan is very famous for surprises. So it could be anything. It could be the same. It could be uh, coming to zero. It could be jumping to positive. It could be anything. So very, very important. Uh, then uh, we followed by the interest rate decision from Bank of Australia. And the expectation is to keep the rates uh, the same. See the difference? 4.3% or 4.35 and minus 0 0.1. Uh, so there's a big pressure on Bank of Japan to do something. Let's see, maybe this time around they'll actually do something about it. And followed by press conference. So whatever this action will be, it will be comment, uh, commented on the press conference as usually it happens. CPI numbers from, <coughs> excuse me, from Canada. And uh, we're moving to Wednesday. And we have a CPI numbers from uh, uh, Bank or from uh, UK. We have, uh, as you could see here, at by the way, over here I have times in 
GMT. You can set up your own local time or any time that fits you. So here comes the highlight of the week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. GMT. Monetary policy statement, economic projects, projection, interest rate, uh, and then is the decision. So it's all about the same time at uh, 6 p.m. GMT. And uh, 30 minutes later, press conference. That's what I meant by saying uh, the speech of Powell and the body language and everything. They usually are drilling him pretty well and hard during the press conference all the representatives from the uh, newspapers and financial institutions. So that's Wednesday, 6 p.m. GMT and press conference 30 minutes later. GDP numbers from New Zealand. We'll take a look at New Zealand uh, dollar later. It's been a week uh, the past few days. Maybe there's a reason for it. Uh, as you could see today, I have two pages very eventful week and this is only high impact events as you understand so this much more thursday also big day we have employment data from australia uh oh i missed one there's a fifth one bank of switzerland also swiss national bank is is also reporting on the policy and the interest rate decisions sorry about that i missed that so it's five wow big week uh, PMI numbers from Germany, press conference uh, 30 minutes after the rate decision from Switzerland, that's on Thursday. Uh, European Union PMI numbers, and here comes the UK numbers. We have manufacturing PMI, PMI, uh, Bank of England minutes for the last meeting, and then we have interest rate decision and uh, that's all on Thursday. So I have two decisions on Thursdays, Swiss National Bank and Bank of England. And uh, wrapping up with manufacturing PMI from the States. And Friday, we have retail sales from UK and uh, service PMI from US. Big week. So again, how many decisions we have? Bank of Japan and Bank of Australia. That's two on Tuesday. Wednesday's US is three, and Thursday, Switzerland four, and UK or England is five. So five interest rate decisions. Wow, that's going to be a powerful week. OK, so um, let's move to the charts now. Let's move to the charts. And uh, we'll start with MT4. And uh, let's take a look at China. As uh, I've been starting with China, big focus there. Uh, by the way, I think uh, US is working now on on uh, ban of TikTok from uh, uh, being used in US. I think they're bringing it in front of the Congress as we speak. Let's see what happens there. It just came to my mind. OK, so uh, as you know, China is not uh, the strongest lately. And uh, since the government started to take measures and inject uh, capital into the markets, uh, it's been recovering a little bit. We just had this uh, double tap uh, matching the resistance of uh, November of last year. We rejected it and then we're sitting right on 200 moving average here. So with China as a tradition, uh, in a funny way I said it, uh, we're watching three instruments. So uh, four instruments. That's the uh, crude oil, copper, and uh, two currencies that are called commodity currencies, which is Australian and New Zealand dollar. So let's take a quick look. We'll start with oil. Oil is bouncing. If you remember, I mentioned that if China recovery continues, we might see oil popping up as China is a big user of oil and oil is sensitive to economic situation in China as well. So as, as you could see here, uh, we had a, a two strong days. Uh, when we get to commodities, I'll give you the numbers and everything else. I just want to show it to you how it is sensitive. And also copper, a uh, nice move to the upside. If you remember, we mentioned it, the copper is trying to push through and it did. And 
Australian and New Zealand dollar, normally they would probably go higher, but because the US dollar strengthening, uh, both of them sold. And as I mentioned, New, New Zealand dollar is a super weak for some reason. We'll, we'll show it when we get to commodities. So that's China. Now, uh, Japan, after rejecting uh, this double top here, uh, we moved lower, uh, confirmed the previous support, and we're kind of sitting here, I think, awaiting that decision on uh, Bank of Japan as um, that decision, the same way the Feds are affecting equity markets in U.S., the same way, uh, I guess, the interest rate decision in Japan is affecting the local index. All right, so uh, let's uh, take a look at indices uh, US. We start with um, Dow Jones. So you could see Thursday and Friday as the data came stronger than expected, the inflation related data. Uh, and we're getting closer to that uh, Fed's decision that uh, really analyzing all this inflation data. We, we saw a two day decline in Dow Jones, S&Ps, similar idea we started the week with the all-time highs in s ps and then thursday and friday we sold and nasdaq sold the most we had the three consecutive sessions as the tech stocks give away uh, some profits we'll take a look at individual stocks shortly as well so we started the week again with the all-time high and then uh went down now out of all the indices, the German index is very, very strong after making all time highs again. As you could see, we're, we're having a five consecutive months to the upside. The week started with the gap and continuation, but we are kind of, we had three consecutive days with the same tops. Uh, let's see if that's so. Uh, 18,313 on Thursday we went down 18,328, a little higher and 18,327, a dollar shy or a point that's quoted in euros. So one point shy of the previous day, all time high. So uh, unlike the US indices, uh, actually we did close on the highs almost of the week. And uh, tell you the truth, uh, it looks very strong. I don't know it's, if it's uh, supported fundamentally, uh, I know the economy in Germany is not doing that, that great, but maybe it's all also related to interest rate and uh, the rates of local currency, which is Euro. I guess we're going to find out. Either we're going to move higher here in German index, or it will catch up with the sell off on US indices if we continue selling off the upcoming week. Again, we have interest rate decisions, five of them coming up. It's going to be very interesting to watch that. UK index uh, followed the US, also sold on Thursday after the recent recovery. We're not even close to all time highs here. As you could see here, we've kind of a triple top here. The first one we hit uh, October, September last year, then tried to retest it in December, three months later, and another three months later. It looks like every quarter. Lately, we tried to break out. So uh, UK is showing a little bit of the issues. We're not getting close to the highs. Okay, moving to the individual stocks. Uh, I start with the Microsoft. That's Microsoft. You remember we mentioned it reached uh, the level of being number one, bypassing Apple since Apple sold. And this past week, Thursday, we break, we made an all-time high. We hit uh, 427.61. And Friday, we opened with a gap down and continued. So that's also, again, just to remind us, uh, lately, all this uh, move up is driven by AI-related companies. So Microsoft, especially NVIDIA. I'm going to move to MT5 for that. And just want to show you NVIDIA. We had... Uh, the previous week we made all-time high. This past week uh, didn't look. We still uh, closed higher than opened, but uh, it looks like we are uh, we are kind of reaching that point where the investors are taking profits. And this is your 
day right here on the 8th of March, International Women's Day, when the stock sold, then we try to recover. We recover maybe, I mean, if you, if you look at it, not, not, not uh, exactly, but it looks like 50% recovery, and then we went down again. So that's NVIDIA. Well, we're already on MT5. Again, just to remind you, MT5 platform has more instruments. That's why I brought it up. Um, Oracle. Uh, if you remember, Oracle had a great move to the upside. And uh, you couldn't go any higher. So that uh, initial range has been broken. But then we came back to that range again. So let's see what happens. But uh, very important, uh, Adobe stock uh they had earnings and the uh revenue guidance uh going ahead they, they're not looking so great so the stock went down or gap down actually about uh and continued lower so went down about 13.7 percent on friday a huge drop 13 percent in one day almost 14 uh that's a big big drop there Okay, so it looks like the tech stocks are getting a little bit scared by the Fed's potential change of course or change of mood or change of uh, actions. I guess we'll find out this week, but they are uh, getting very spooky there. Tesla has been selling, and uh, I believe in the past two weeks uh, it lost a lot of uh, volume. It went from uh, almost 200 to 163. That's about 18% loss in two weeks. And uh, we came to the level where we had a double support here and went higher. So let's see if this holds. If not, we could potentially continue lower. There's a lot of article, articles on uh, Tesla. Some say that Tesla needs a real CEO who will be caring about the company. I mean, a lot of controversial things there. Uh, and we know that uh, Tesla has a tendency to sell and then uh, uh, get resurrected and then sell again and again and so on. So I guess we'll find out. And in general, uh, the industries uh, of uh, electric vehicles, they, they're not uh, are really uh, so successful lately for some reason. Uh, some stocks are really selling. Uh, if you take Lucent, Lucent for instance, uh, not, not looking so great. Okay, so uh, that's Tesla. Now let's take a look at big guys. So we spoke about uh, Microsoft. Uh, let's take a look at Google. If you remember, I mentioned to you when uh, I mentioned the rel relative strength of the market sold at a certain point and Google actually went up and I said, if the market is holding up, Google is going to continue with it until we hit the 50 day moving average and we stalled right there. So Google Thursday up, Friday down, still holding the Thursday's range. Apple stock. Uh, it looks like since that uh, uh, beginning of the move, and uh, there are a few things, the China banning the products, uh, European Union got, they, they hit Apple with uh, 2 billion fine and so on. So, uh, and guess what? Well, I just see it now. Uh, a famous uh, dead cross is showing right here. Again, it's not uh, in stone, but a lot of analysts are considering it as a sell signal when the 50-day moving average crosses below the 200. Uh, the opposite happened here back in, uh, wow, a year ago exactly, March 23, we crossed to the upside, and it took a year for it to cross back below. I guess we'll be seeing what's, what's happening next. Amazon. Amazon has been super strong. Just to remind us, it's been added to Dow Jones Index. And uh, if you look at the weekly chart, it's a flat week with the tail up and down and open and close. Interesting. Open uh, 174.22, close 174.19, down three cents according to this chart. All right. So we'll be watching Amazon. Uh, it looks like it's drawing a little channel here. As you could see, right? That was a <clears throat> support. The resistance around 179.50, about $8 uh, range. Let's see if we're staying in the channel and accumulating for continuation to the upside or 
its accumulation for a move down. So we'll be watching Amazon there. Netflix. Here comes Netflix. Also rejected the previous resistance around 619, 620. And on the weekly chart, you could see why the whole sell-off started uh, December of 2021 with the big sell-off after the move up on the COVID excitement when everybody was home and watching movies. And then slowly recovery went and we came back to that point and we're struggling around there again. So it could be that uh, it's trying to break through but failing and we might come down and look for the support or we might break out. I guess we'll find out soon. Uh, I want to see Boeing again. Uh, if you remember all the issue about the failing of the doors and other things and other findings that were found by, the, by inspectors. And I think uh, they just uh, started the criminal file or opened the criminal file. So I guess we'll find out more. But uh, technically speaking, it looks like we're coming to this level from which we had a nice acceleration to the upside. And it looks like buyers are testing or trying their luck around the years, so around 180. We'll find out what's that. Okay, so uh, two more stocks I want to bring up as oil is going higher. Uh, we'll take a look at oil at the moment, but the two stocks uh, to watch, definitely Exxon, Mobile, and, uh, and uh, Chevron. As you could see, they were the reactive went the way of possibly retesting uh, the resistance here around 112, 113. We did try on Friday, but came right back. So that's Exxon and Chevron is retesting this uh, close uh, resistance that we just had uh, back uh, in December, uh, sorry, February 22nd. We did have a tail, but no continuation, and we kind of glued to 200 moving average here. So definitely we'll be watching crude oil and see what's happening next. So let's move to crude oil and other commodities. Uh, let's start from crude oil if we already speak of it. So crude oil, uh, two sessions up Friday. It's a little bit of a flat day. And uh, for the week, oil had a nice move. So you could see here the low of 76, 78. The high is 81, 60. Uh, I might be mistaken, but it's about 6% move to the upside. So let's see what's next. We clearly are holding the 7650 support, as we mentioned a few times. And we did close above the previous tails right here, starting from uh, November last year, November last year, January or end of January. As you could see, there were a few attempts to break. And we did manage to stay about 200 moving average here. Okay, so let's see how oil continues. Again, we'll be watching China and also global uh, economic situation as well. Okay, so that's our crude oil. Natural gas, again, uh, I just came up with this thing. Predicting natural gas, I'm predicting the weather. Literally, it's very sensitive, and I really don't know how to fundamentally analyze it. Other than a look at technicals, we have uh, three days in a row uh, holding this level, low 165, low 164.1, low 164.4. So uh, we did break the previous or the here, the support that we had uh, at the end of February. So if we go lower, I mean, it's no-brainer. We'll probably go and retest this low of 152. If we get, go back above 170 again, we could be going and retesting the two. But like I said, predicting natural gas, not an easy thing. Um, gold. Now, if you remember, I showed in the beginning the slide of, um, I'll show it again, of 10-year uh, yields. Here it is. So the whole week has been going higher. So we said that gold should show a little bit of a weakness. 
and dollar a little bit of a strength. So same as exactly what happened. So this week, not very aggressively, but gold sold a little bit from the beginning of the week. On the weekly chart, we'll see we'll see it much better. So the high was uh, 122.88, almost 89, and the low, uh, sorry, 21.88, and the low 21.50 and a half. So if we're watching gold, if it continue lower, we'll see uh, this uh, a large candle here from the 26th of week of 26th of November. That's the weekly chart. Uh, let's see, it's around uh, 2140, 2142, if we manage to hold this right here. Or we might come right back. And if we continue lower, if you remember, there was a big accumulation in this channel here between 2008 and 2084, roughly. So uh, we'll be watching gold. And of course, when the Feds make that decision in the press conference, uh, we'll see some volatility as usual in gold, dollar, and uh, equity markets. So that's gold. Copper, as we mentioned, when we spoke about China, copper had a nice move to the upside. Let's see what's, uh, what potentially could happen. So you could see here, there was a lot of action around exactly this point, around uh, 411. 420 big tails but we didn't manage to close above 411 right where we are now so this was a big move we stopped right here and let's see if we continue here we'll be watching china we'll be watching uh, economic situation and indices globally as well so that's on uh, copper Palladium is coming back to life. It's been strong, as you could see here. Again, monthly chart. We've been really sold here. And here's your daily daily chart. We went straight from 1257 all the way to nine, almost 900. Then we had a little, a little bit of consolidation. Made a lower low. A lot of actions here. We had about five, six days of really trying hard to break lower we couldn't the finally on the uh 14th of february we had to move up we came back above 950 if you remember we mentioned that number many times we had a lot of actions here then finally we kicked off 950 that was on the 6th of march huge bar to the upside and we are holding here so as you could see here, the moment we broke to the top of that bar a few days later, the buyers coming in, but we are currently rejecting the 200 moving average here. So let's see how this will work out. Uh, a lot of uh, accumulation through these levels here. The impulse was very, very strong, and we're currently trading higher than that. So one indication we could set up is the top of this uh, large candle here the high was 1072.70 let's make it exactly okay so this is the level that we probably will try to test as you could see here, a lot of tails below, but so far we managed to stay above, and that's the latest move on Friday. So if we manage to stay above and start building up, we might continue higher, retest again the 200 moving average, and potentially move higher because, I mean, the instrument has been sold tremendously. And if the opposite happens and we come back below that uh, 1062, we might be channeling again and maybe even going and retest this level but this looks very strong if you see impulse like that uh, you cannot really call it a fake one because after a normal profit taking for two days we actually moved higher and closed above that so that's a very strong sign here technically speaking okay and uh, of course a hero, a coca, 
uh, you can dedicate it to the heroic efforts of West Africa in producing cocoa. The supplies is super low and the prices are at the historical highs. I mean, just take a look at it. Uh, only in the past two weeks, actually in the week, take a look this week from 64.16 to 80.50. I calculated it's about 25% just in one week. I mean, it is crazy. Uh, that's what commodities are, especially soft commodities uh, or any commodities. Uh, they, they have a tendency to move crazy one way or another, and the corrections could be crazy as well. So definitely correction will come, but as of now, uh, it's definitely just shortage of supply. Take a look. Monthly candles. One. The second one is double of it. And the, the other one of the last month so far, we've been uh, only half the month by already, I think, bypassed the size of the previous candle. And we closed at the high of the week of the month so far. And definitely the high of the week. Just to give you an idea I, I just visually analyze it right so this move last week was more than the previous one two three four the previous five weeks move to the upside anyway we're watching coco it could easily go higher you know as they say the sky is the limit uh you know sometimes i have questions how high can it go could go as high as it wants and how low can it go as low as it wants and that's the beauty of the market so at some point we might see that correction and some traders were hoping for that correction a few times there was a small one small one here and right here after double tap the moment we broke through we just went flying up so coco will be watching coco all right moving to moving to currencies and again as we said dollar should be showing strength based on the 10-year yields and that's exactly what happened we started the week with the small gains and then thursday was a, a big day we raised the previous few days of uh, stagnation in a way and uh friday we closed higher but not a super uh strong move so dollar index of course if you look through majors they're back into this is the pound if you remember classic uh scenario here as we've been in this channel for a very long time 126 to 128 we're back into the channel and that's what we said the moment we go back we will continue now we towards the uh i don't know the top third of the channel visually if you look at it so let's see how this week again interest rate decisions from both pound and dollar effective uh euro dollar a sell off on Thursday, we had one, uh, 108.87. If you remember, we said we might be challenging the 110 mark, we almost hit it. We hit it 109.80 on the 8th of March. Uh, here comes uh, Japanese yen dollar strength added to it, and the weakness of yen moved the, the pair higher here. And again, Bank of Japan also making that decision this week. It's going to be very, very interesting. We'll be watching that. USD CAD moved higher. Strong move on Thursday. Friday, almost flat. The strength of oil should be adding normally to the strength of Canadian dollar a little bit. Let's see how we continue. And as we said, Australian and New Zealand dollars sold strongly the last two days, especially New Zealand dollar. It's very close to the previous support here and close to the 200 moving average and the swiss franc we are dollar swiss we are trading about 200 moving average we could be setting up for continuation or not so both uh swiss national uh, national bank and the feds are making the decision on interest rate this week now, uh, let's take a look at yen because I'm, I'm really focused on this. Uh, so are other traders and investors as we are awaiting that move on Bank of Japan. Take a look. Uh, we did have a nice correction here 
on Swiss JPY, almost hitting 200 moving average. Now in between the 200 and the 100. Australian, flat, Canadian, uh, also trying to correct here towards the 50 moving average. Euro JPY above the 50 moving average, possibly uh, going to retest the recent highs here. So, and here's pound as well, also strong against the yen above the 50 moving average. And the only one that was close weaker uh, against the Japanese yen is New Zealand dollar. It's very important to, to, to spot this um, relative strength. So it just shows that yen was weak against most of the currencies and New Zealand dollar was weaker than yen. So it makes it weaker than all the currencies for the past few days and two consecutive days in red as you could see here so something is cooking new zealand dollar it's been weak i uh, just want to show you another one if you take two of the uh commodity currencies australian dollar has been recovering here you go it's been selling against new zealand dollar but this past few weeks has been recovering we just hit the 200 moving average here so uh worth watching it we could be facing resistance soon either by the resistant levels that are upcoming here from which was sold and made a lower low or the 200 moving average itself. So we'll be watching that as well. Also, Euro NZD on the way to face a strong resistance worth watching it this week. We are getting there very close to that resistance. We are about what 18 pips away. GBP NZD, the same thing. We actually add that resistance as we speak, 209. That's uh, a lot of trading going on, as you could see here. Uh, October 23, last year. That's October 23. That's... January 21st, we tried again getting close here and we are approaching that level. Definitely we'll be watching somewhere around here, 109, 109.50. We're getting there, we're about 20, 15, 20 pips away from that uh, retesting. And uh, that's on on the weakness of New Zealand dollar. Again, very important this week, five, not four, I mentioned four, but it's five interest rate decisions. Uh, Swiss National Bank, Bank of Japan, uh, US, UK, and Australia will be definitely, definitely watching that. So that's as far as Forex, and let's take a quick look at Mr. Bitcoin as uh, the excitement was cooling down a little bit as we speak. We did have uh, two consecutive days at the highs. On the 13th, we hit 30, uh, 73, 645. The very next day, we went a little bit higher, 73, 771, but closed lower. And then we just sold. So today we actually, the first day we're trying to recover a little bit after the recent sell-off. And the sell-off was significant. I don't know, 9, 10, 12% from the top. And we currently recovering. So let's see, 30 minutes as we speak. The last two hours we are recovering here on Bitcoin. Uh, it could be normal profit taking. It could be... Uh, it could be uh, uh, a loss of uh, excitement. It could be anything. Again, uh, it's a highly, highly uh, volatile instrument, a highly speculative. People like it. People get scared. People get excited. So good luck to everyone. And uh, that's it. That wraps up our webinar. And. Uh, I want to say thank you to all and of course remind us about our channels you have telegram you have uh twitter or x today i guess x twitter right former twitter and youtube channel 
if you missed the webinar, don't sweat, don't stress. Uh, sign up to YouTube channel. Click on that bell, get notified, uh, and uh, you can always find webinars being recorded and posted. Again, if you are watching this webinar on YouTube, please write your comments, your suggestions, whatever you feel like. Very, very important. Share with your friends. Click on likes. I want to wish everyone a great weekend, whatever is left. And definitely get some rest and energy. It's going to be an, an eventful week, a very excited one. Uh, volatile, I would say. A lot of events, a lot of moves, a lot of potential trades. All the best. Take care.